All right. <clears throat> the best way that I can describe my testimony in coming to know Christ is like finally seeing something for the first time. It's like growing up with a blindfold, never knowing what light is or what it looks like. You hear people talk about it, so you know it exists, but you don't know it for yourself. And you figure that since you've been perfectly fine without it, you don't bother looking for it. Your family tells you light exists, and that's enough for you. Until one day you finally see light for the first time, and suddenly you realize how much your life needed light. You realize that all the stumbling in the dark could have been less painful if you just had some light shining your way. That light wasn't just light, but it was love, peace, and hope that would be your anchor through life. That light was God, and you were no longer just hearing about him, but you could finally see him. For the longest time, I felt like I couldn't see what I was told to believe. I grew up in a Catholic home with a mom who had all the faith in the world in God. She made sure to always remind my siblings and I of the importance in believing in him and trusting in him, all things good and bad. When things went well, we thanked him for it, and when they didn't, we accepted it, most of the time. Church goings weren't very often when I was growing up, and in fact, they became less and less frequent every time. We started only going during Easter or Christmas, or simply because we hadn't been for a while, and eventually we stopped going at all. I even remember one day during a Mass, the priest there told us that it wasn't even too important to come to church often, that what mattered most was that we never stopped believing in God. And that's exactly what I did. Because I believed, I did everything I was told to do to be right with God. Because I believed I was confirmed as a Catholic, I got married through the Catholic Church, I had my children baptized, I had my daughter do her first communion, we too confessed our sins to a priest and prayed a series of prayers to be forgiven. And if we hadn't confessed any of our sins in over a year, we wouldn't dare take communion until we did, because we were told we had to be forgiven before we could do so. And so because I always did what I was told by my church, I thought of myself as a good person who was good with God. I always tried my best to be a good person. I prayed to him, usually when things weren't going well, but I prayed. Um, and most importantly, I believed in him, and I thought that was enough to be saved. As I got older, I got to a point where I started to feel like something was missing. I had always believed in God, but many times I felt distant from him, sometimes even forgotten. And when people would question my religious views or beliefs, sometimes even attack them, I found myself not even being able to defend them because oftentimes I didn't even know what I was defending. I wanted to so badly believe that I had a relationship with God because I always believed in him, but it didn't always feel that way. As time went on, my life started to feel out of control I felt like the harder I tried to control the situations I would find myself in, the more problems would arise. Sometimes I even felt like maybe I was being punished for all the wrong decisions I had made. Other times I felt shame in praying. I felt like a hypocrite. I thought, how dare I ask God for anything when he knows all that I've done? How disappointed he must feel. And I felt like even when I did try to do good things, it just wouldn't bring me any closer to him. Because deep down, I truly felt ashamed and unforgiven for all the wrong I had done and for being distant from him. I didn't know where my faith lay anymore, so I decided to look for him, and I figured coming to church would be a good start. My older brother had been inviting me to come to church with him for quite some time, and I finally decided to come and join him. I started attending fellowship six months ago, and I heard Pastor Mark read and explain the Bible, and I began to learn more and more. I had never actually read a Bible before until I started coming here, and I just couldn't believe how much God actually speaks to us through it. I felt like I was hearing God for the first time. Um, I even started reading the book, Gentle and Lowly, by myself, and it helped me learn how much Jesus loves me 
I found myself talking to him more, praying to him, seeking his guidance, and I actually felt heard. For, this, for the first time, I actually felt close to him. I had decided to finally let go and give God control of my life, and he did. My life slowly started to pick up. God began working in my life, helping mend the shame I had been carrying, fixing broken relationships I had with loved ones, bringing in new friendships, and guiding me as I move up in my career. In a matter of months, I was able to grow a relationship with God that I was not able to do in all my years. I felt like the blindfold had come off, and I was finally able to see God. There he was, with wide open arms, as if he had been waiting for me a long time. Through the word of God, I realized that I am a sinner who couldn't save myself, and that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I've put my trust in Jesus and have experienced forgiveness and a new life. Now Jesus is my Savior and Lord, and he is leading my life. And it gives me joy to be able to share with everyone that I know now that I am loved, I am forgiven, and I am saved. All right, Gracie, I'm going to ask you the same two questions. Are you trusting in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins and eternal life? And is it your desire with God's help to follow him as the Lord of your life? Yes. All right, have a seat. And Gracia, based on your profession of faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> 